Hello, my name is David Parry and I'm from the Sussex Yacht Club in Shoreham by Sea on the south coast of the UK. Now, in this video, I'm going to be taking on a tour of our new clubhouse. But before I do that, I want to tell you a bit about the story of how we got to this position. So this whole project can be traced back to one night and that is the 6th of December 2013, actually at one o'clock in the morning there was a huge storm surge. We've got the River Ada next to us just here and it caused extensive flooding within Shoreham and also of our existing clubhouse. From this event, a whole project was born called the Ada Defence Project. And the idea was to build a, um, a sea defence, a wall, basically around the River Ada to protect the, the town and uh, the, the surrounding um, uh, businesses. Now, this wall is a fantastic idea, but there was one problem with it. It went right through the centre of our existing clubhouse, which is what I'm standing on here at the moment. So our existing clubhouse had to come down. We didn't plan for um, building a new building, but it had to be done. So that's enough about the background to the project. Let's go and have a look around. Now this will probably be the most recognisable view of the um, Yacht Club. Um, reason being is the main pedestrian bridge into Shoreham from Shoreham Beach is just behind me just here. Now first thing you'll notice about this building is how high up it is. We've had to raise it 1.4 metres off the ground and once again this is to cover for the possible storm surges that could happen. Um, this should cover it not just for now but hopefully for the next 200 years as well. Um, I won't be around to test that but let's see what happens. Now the electrical systems inside the building as well have been raised up to make sure that even if the building does flood it won't affect any of the major services and we won't end up with a lot of damage. So behind me is the main entrance to the building, it's um, direct access from the high street. Um, there will be a ramp here, not this ramp, there will be a ramp here obviously for disabled persons and also for the general public to use. So when you come through the double doors, it's double doors to keep the cold out and to keep the heat within the building, you'll come into this main reception area. A lovely touch in here is we've got the original stained glass window from our old building which we've incorporated over here. So coming through from the reception area, you come into this foyer area we have here. Now, as you can see, we've got the stairwell behind us. And what I really like about this stairwell is we've incorporated some of the planking that's the floor in the original building. And it's lovely to see those touches. Now, this kind of splits the building. So you can go upstairs uh, to where a lot of the entertainment areas are, um, or down here is where the training rooms and the conference rooms are. So let's go and have a look down here first, and then I'll take you upstairs. So off the main corridor you'll find this room which is our conference room. Um, this will hold up to 59 people and can be used both internally and also we will rent this out to be used externally as well. You can use it for training and also for events as well. It is state of the art, it has a very clever air conditioning system which will monitor things like CO2 levels, it will have projection and a sound loop as well and everything that you'd expect from a conference facility. Um, best of all you've got that amazing view of the river. So I'm now in the ladies changing room, um, there's still some furniture to go in here but what's great is the size of this room. Also what you will notice in this building is most of it has underfloor heating which is a very efficient way of heating, um, heating the, the building. Um, another thing that's great, there's a lot of things in here which are um, uh, uh, sensitive to movement so you don't need to have switches or anything like that. Um, the lights come on automatically and also the water on the taps comes on when your hand is waved underneath. So here we have the gents changing room, as you can see it's very very similar to the ladies, a great size but also got underfloor heating once again. Um, this room does actually have a door which leads directly into the training room and let me go in there and explain what that's about. So right at the end of the corridor you will find this room which is our training room. As you can see it's a wet style room. The idea of this room is you can be training on ribs, power boats, you can be training um, doing yacht or dinghy training and even with your wet weather gear on with wetsuits on or whatever you can come into this room and be trained in a warm environment. So it's really useful for doing the classroom and then straight out to the boats. Now I mentioned earlier about the door that leads through to the, um, uh, the male changing rooms. The reason for that is this whole area, the changing rooms and this room, can be locked off from the rest of the building. The reason for this is we quite often work with the emergency services. They use our facilities for training and they want somewhere where they can keep their equipment secure and safe when they're in the building or when they're out on the water. This room will also be used by our sailability group and the reason for that again is once again it's very easy to get people from here into the boats and then back into the building. We have a, a ramp outside here which is very easy for wheelchair access and the boats are very very close to the building. Now right next to our training room 
is this room, which is our warm room. Um, now, this is not a room that we had in the old building. It's something that we, we really did need. Now, I mentioned about our saleability section just now, which is the section that looks after the um, disabled persons and um, allows them to get on the water and really enjoy sailing as a sport. Now, what we've got is we've got these radiant panels here next to us, which allows us to warm people up gently, um, um, as it's very important to get people back up to temperature because you can get cold and wet on the water. And like I said previously, um, people had to go home to do this they couldn't stay on the on the premises and get themselves back up to temperature but now with this room we have this ability this room will also um, be our first aid room and we actually have we'll have sink and we will have a um, um, a bed in here which has the ability to be lowered down to the ground level which will really help to be able to deal with um, any sort of circumstances or situations that could happen at the yacht club now, like I said, this isn't a room that we had in the old building. The old building wouldn't have allowed us to build something like this. But having this new building has allowed us to embrace this new technology and really do some fantastic things for the community. Now this little area here is our 24 hour access area. The idea of this area is that if you've been working on your boat and you've been working on it late into the night and the yacht club is closed, you still have access to somewhere that's warm and also to a toilet facility. Um, and like I said, this will be used, this will be open 24 hours and be on a key fob entry to members of the yacht club. So that's the downstairs. Now let's have a look upstairs. But before I do that, I just want to quickly mention about the lift. So we had a lift in the old building, um, but it was a very small lift. And the reason for that was because of the size of the building and where we could put it. With this one, we've got a much larger lift and it is fully automatic. It has automatic doors, so it's great for not just able bodies, but also disabled people as well. When you get to the top of the stairs, there's three ways that you can go. One is straight into the restaurant. One is to the members lounge, and then we have the Admiral's room next to me here. Let's go in there first and then make our way round. Here we are inside the Admiral's room. Um, there's nothing in it at the moment, but it will have a wood panelled wall, which will be wood once again from the original building. So I'll be using the flooring from the original building, which will be on, on the wall here. They'll also be um, full of 19th century furniture as well. So this room will have a real ambience to it. Um, it's actually been sponsored by the Admiral and his family, which is fantastic to have their support for a room like this. It will be um, a meeting space as well for up to 12 people. There'll be a large table in the middle here but I think that one of the lovely things about it is the way these windows really frame the scenery outside and give a lovely lovely look and feel to this room. So here we are in the members lounge now I'm not going to show you the view just yet I'm going to hang that off just for a moment um, I just want to show you a couple of things here one is this fire we have this lovely fireplace here which is a gas fire which can be used just for display but also will give out heat you can turn it on to give out, give out heat if you want as well and behind us we've got this beautiful display case this is actually the first time we've been able to show all of our trophies in one go we just didn't have room before in the old club so we've had this case built specifically to take all of our trophies which we're very proud of so there you go there's the view so you've got the footbridge in the foreground there you've got the uh, river running underneath and then you've got the houseboats over in the background there that's some of the major landmarks of shore on by sea that can all be seen from this view which is fantastic so in case you were wondering, no members club uh, wouldn't be complete without a bar. And yes, we do have a bar facility here. This bar actually goes round the corner as well into the restaurant and I'll take you there now. So accessed from either the members lounge or from its own entrance, this is our main function room and also our main restaurant as well. The views over the river are quite spectacular. Now this room will be available for hire. Um, you can use it for functions, for weddings. We are trying to get a license to conduct uh, ceremonies here as well. So keep an eye out for that. All of the sliding doors on the left here can be opened, giving you access to these amazing views of the river. So there you go, that was a tour of the inside of the building. So before we finish up, let me take you around the front of the building and show you the riverside. So something I haven't mentioned yet, which you may have noticed, is the difference in the colour in the brickwork. So we've got a much more ready brick this side, and then we've got a more sort of grey brick that side. This is deliberate, and it's all about the aesthetics of the area. So on the road side, you're seeing more of a red brick, which suits the, um, uh, the other buildings, which are this side. And then the other side is the more grey brick, which is much more suiting to a more industrial looking uh, building, um, which is more about the other side of the river. And this is really how the architect has managed to get this building to blend in and really work with the heritage of this, um, uh, of this area. 
Now I just mentioned about the architect and something I'd really like to say is that I feel the architect has done a fantastic job in really showing um, what this area is all about in this building in that there's been boat building going on on this site for hundreds of years and um, I feel that the cues in the architecture here really um, helps to bring that to life. Um, an interesting, um, interesting side note on the architect as well actually is that he lives locally and he was one of the people that was affected by that original storm surge back in 2013 so he's got a vested interest in creating something not only that's beautiful but also can deal with the ad adverse weather conditions. Thank you for watching this video, um, I hope you found it interesting. If you want to contact the Yacht Club, please look in the description below and we'll have all the information on how to get in touch with us. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.